Hello, in this lecture, we are going to discuss the first software lifecycle model, that is the sequential development model. An example for the sequential model is a waterfall model. We will get into why it is named that way in a bit. Here is the definition of the model. A sequential development model describes the software development process as a linear sequential flow of activities. So in this model, the development model is defined as a linear or sequential flow of activities. So let's take a better look at the model. The first activity in this model is the requirement activity. Here we analyze the requirement. Then we go into the design phase where we will write the test condition and test case. After that, we will start building the software, which is the implementation stage of the process. When we have gone through all these activities and our software is ready, then we go into testing. Here we will test the software for defects and if any are found, we will fix them. And once the software passes through testing, it will be released to the customer. So these are the activities in the sequential model. And as you can see, they are in a linear flow. You have requirement, design, build, testing and release. But this type of model has a drawback. Until we finish the first three steps, we don't test the software we are building. We only test it once we reach this level. This is a big disadvantage of this model. And it is the reason we usually choose to work with other models. We'll study them in later videos. Now, before concluding this topic, there are a few points we need to remember about the waterfall model. The first point is, any phase in the development process should begin when the previous phase is complete. We can only start the second phase once the first is completed. Like once requirement is completed, we can start with design and so on. Now, the second point. In theory, there is no overlap of phases. As we have seen in the diagram, there is no overlap in the phases. Once requirement is done, we start the design phase. Once design is done, we start the build phase. Then test, then release. But in practice, it is beneficial to have early feedback from the following phases. So while this model doesn't allow for any overlaps, in practice, it is better for the product for there to be some overlap between the phases. The final point is, test activities only occur after all other development activities have been completed. This is the big drawback of this model. Testing only starts after the development activities are over. So we don't have any early feedback process in this model. And that is the reason we usually choose the V model or the agile development model instead of this one. That's all for this lecture. I'll see you in the next one. Happy testing.